This LOS is demonstrate the application of DuPont analysis of return on equity and calculate and interpret effects of changes in its components. DuPont analysis, the decomposition of ROE. So ROE is return on equity and the formula for return on equity is net income over equity, okay? Now, what we're talking about when we're talking about the decomposition of the ROE, we're expanding the formulas, okay? So the first step that we can do is we can expand the return on equity, net income over equity, to also equal return on assets, ROA, times leverage, okay? Return on assets is net income over total assets, and leverage is total assets over equity. We've seen both those equations in a previous LOS when we looked at the ratios for the first time. So we can see using algebra, if we scratch out the denominator here and the numerator here, we're back to our net income over equity. I've used some color coding. Uh, this is my slides, I developed them in the past. For people that don't have a strong background in accounting, if you follow the colors, it makes, uh, it's easier to understand, okay? So ROE, net income over equity, is the same as return on assets times leverage. Return on assets, net income over total assets, times leverage, total assets over equity. Scratch out the numerator denominator, and you're back to the blue over gold, the net income over equity. Now the next step in the decomposition of the ROE is I can break down the return on assets even further. So ROA, return on assets, net income over total assets. But we can also expand that equation so that ROA is the same thing as the net profit margin times the asset turnover. Because the formula for net profit margin is net income over revenue or sales times revenue over total assets for asset turnover. Again, if I scratch out the denominator and the numerator, we can see we're back to net income over total assets. So ROA, return on assets, can be expanded to be net profit margin times asset turnover. Net income over revenue, net profit margin, times revenue over assets, asset turnover, and that's ROA. DuPont analysis, the decomposition of the ROE. So we're continuing now. We start with return on equity, which is net income over equity. The next level is that ROE can also be ROA times leverage, okay? ROE can equal ROA times leverage because that's net income over assets times assets over equity. If we scratch out the assets, we're back to the net income over assets. Then we further expanded the ROA to be net income over revenue times revenue over total assets. Again, if we scratch out the revenue, we're at net income over assets, which is ROA. So we expanded ROA to net income over revenue, which is the profit margin, times the asset turnover, which is revenue over total assets. So now we've expanded the DuPont, uh, the formula for ROE, return on equity, to three items, which is net income over revenue, times revenue over assets, times assets over equity. Again, I used a bit of color coding, you can see if I scratch out the denominator and the numerator here, and then the denominator and the numerator here, I'm back to my net income over equity. So once again, we've gone from ROE, net income over equity, is the same as ROA times leverage, which is the same as net profit margin times asset turnover times leverage. So let's do a practice question. Assume US GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, applies unless otherwise noted. Two companies operating in the same industry both achieved the same return on equity with the same net sales, but the two companies were different with respect to return on total assets. Compared with the company that had the higher return on assets, the company with the lower return on assets most likely had A, a higher total asset turnover, a higher financial leverage multiplier, or a higher proportion of common equity in its capital structure. Okay, this is a nice question. So we know that ROE equals net income over equity, okay? But with the DuPont, we can expand that. So ROE also equals the ROA, return on assets, times the leverage, correct? Which was uh, net income over assets times assets over equity, correct? So this question is saying that they ha companies have the same ROE, but one company has a higher ROA.
So if one company has a higher OA, the other company must have the higher leverage ratio for it to have the same ROE, okay? And that's why the correct answer is B, the financial leverage multiplier. The DuPont system can be used to break down return on equity into three components, profit margin, total asset turnover, and financial leverage multiplier. The first two components can be multiplied to calculate the return on assets, correct. If the two companies have the same ROE, the company with the lower ROA must have a higher financial leverage multiplier, okay? And that's a lower proportion of common equity in the capital structure. An analyst calculates the following ratios for a firm. Sales over total assets, 2.8. Net profit margin, 4%. Return on total assets, 11.2%. Equity over total assets, 0.625. The return on equity in percentage for this firm is closest to A, 6.4, B, 7, or C, 17.9. Okay, I like this question because they've slipped in a trick here and it's this last uh, column here. They've given you equity over the total of the assets. They've inverted because remember, the formula for ROE equals uh, the, using the expanded DuPont, net income over sales times sales over assets. And that's why it's important. Write these things out, you know, times assets over equity. So you can see quite clearly, we've got net income over sales, that's the profit margin. We do four, we don't do 0.04, times uh, 2.8 sales over assets we've got, but the assets over equity, they've inverted it, they've given us equity over total assets, so we have to do one divided by 0.0625, okay? So when you multiply four times 2.8 times one over, Point, uh, 0.65, we get 17.9, we get the correct answer is C, okay? Uh, it says alt alternatively, ROE is the ROA times the assets over equity. They've given us here ROA times leverage, right? ROA times leverage, we could have done it more quickly. It's the 11.2 times, again, it's got to be the 1 over 0.625. Uh, now, if you made the mistake, if you didn't invert it, you can see this is what happens with the CFA exam, is that if I do four times 2.8 times 0.625, that's gonna equal seven, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna think, oh, I got the answer right, I've got the B. But if you don't slow down and pay very careful attention uh, to the information that they're giving you in the question, that's the exact kind of mistakes that can be made again and again. You have to be laser-like precision in your reading of the questions and pick up these types of little tricks that they can uh, they can give you. So that's why I like this question. This is an excellent one because you always have to pay very close and good attention to reading the question. Another practice question. The following information in US dollar millions for two companies operating in the same industry during the same time period is available. So we've got net sales, total assets, total liabilities. Company A, net sales 120 million, total assets 70, total liabilities 25. Company B, net sales 300 million, total assets 140, total liabilities 40. If both companies achieve a return on equity of 15% for the period, which of the following statements is most likely correct? Compared to company B, company A has A, higher net profit margin, B, higher total asset turnover, or C, lower financial leverage multiplier? Okay, this is another good question because it forces you to think through a little bit of a problem fairly quickly. So first of all, uh, the ROE is the same, 15%, but you need to compare company A versus company B. And they're giving us some data, net sales, total assets, total liabilities. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to remember that ROE is net income over sales times sales over assets. So we've got uh, net sales and we've got assets uh, and we've got liabilities. We don't have net income, by the way. Um, sales we've got, assets we've got, but, and we don't have equity, okay? But uh, equity is easy. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Assets minus liabilities equals equity. So we can see here 70 minus 25. 
the equity for company A equals 45. Don't need to even need my calculator for that. And for company B, assets minus liabilities, 140 minus 40. For company B, the equity equals 100, okay? So you can see I've done that in the little table here for the solution. So now we've got, uh, now we can do our sales over assets for both companies. Uh, for company A, it's 1.71. For company B, it's 2.14. And assets over equity, 1.56 and 1.4. So when you multiply those, because we're going back to net income over sales times sales over assets times assets over equity, we can multiply these two now. And that's going to give you, for company A, 2.67 and for company B, 3.0. So we can see company A at this point is lower than company B. So it must have a higher net income over sales. It must have a higher uh, net profit margin. So the correct answer is A, it's not B, it's not C, okay? So nice little question. First you had to calculate the equity, then you had to do a couple of little calculations, compare them, and then do the deduction that at that stage, company A is lower than company B, so it must have the higher net income over sales. So this is typical uh, question with regards to the decomposition of the DuPont. A little bit tricky the first time you go through them because they're like little puzzles. What do I have? What do I need? What do I calculate first? Uh, very nice little question. Okay, the decomposition of the ROE, we can take it even to another level because net income over revenue can be further uh, decomposed to EBIT over revenue, which is the EBIT margin, times earnings before tax over EBIT, which is the interest burden, times net income over earnings per, uh, before tax, which is the tax burden, okay? So um, we can see if we scratch this out, EBT and uh, EBT here, and um, our EBIT here, we're back to our net income over our revenue, okay? So that's a further decomposition of the net profit margin. We, I haven't seen too many calculations bringing it down to this uh, next level, so that's more of a nice to know, maybe not a need to know, but I do believe you should be aware of that. Okay, this is my slide on the decomposition of the ROE that I put together. And I think it's, uh, it's really helped uh, students in the past understand as kind of a summary exactly what was going on. So we started with our ROE, return on equity, which was of course our net income over sales, okay? And uh, then we uh, decomposed it to the next level. It's the same as return on assets times financial leverage because that was net income over assets times assets over equity, okay? So as we scratched out the assets, we were back to our net income over equity. So return on equity at the first level decomposition was ROA times leverage. And again, I use some color coding here on the arrows you can see that financial leverage assets over equity flows through at every level. And that's why back on the LOS looking at financial ratios for the first time, I said that financial leverage ratio is a pretty important one. We see it uh, in the DuPont. Then the ROA, the return on assets, we can further decompose that to net profit margin times uh, asset uh, turnover, net income over uh, sales times sales over assets, times assets over equity. And that was the level that we is most common that we see uh, questions on the CFA test, practice questions, et cetera. But then just kind of as an FYI, again, using the color coding, uh, total asset turnover doesn't change and the financial leverage doesn't change at that final level. But we can break down the net profit margin to uh, the operating EBIT profit margin times the interest burden times the tax burden. Now again, I haven't seen too many questions based on that, but it's uh, good to know that that's the total decomposition for ROE starting with one formula down here to the bottom of the pyramid where we've got uh, five ratios that make up uh, the calculation for ROE. So the final slide for this uh, LOS is again, just the decomposition of the ROE. The bottom row of that pyramid was the EBIT margin times the interest burden times the tax burden times asset turnover and leverage. As I said, those two uh, didn't change uh, from, the, from the row above. We broke down the um, uh, net income over sales to equal uh, these three formulas. 
And the only last thing here is that the tax burden is one minus the effective tax rate, okay? Net income equals earnings before tax times one minus the tax rate. And here I'd put down just a little example to show you that if earnings before tax is 100, tax is 25, net income is uh, 75, we have a 25% tax rate. So net income over EBT, 75%, one minus the tax rate equals um, 75%, okay? And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.